morning, everyone. I have the pleasure to introduce Dr. Daniela Cis. He is a physician and anesthesiologist in, and in pain management. He practices acupuncture, ar auricular therapy, and psychotherapies focused on, on trauma, including Erickson's hypnosis and EMDR. He also gives trainings in Argentina, Brazil, Chile, and Peru. And he's written a wonderful book called Cromopsychotherapias, which is in Spanish only for right now. So please welcome Dr. Aziz. Hello. Well, before to begin, I want to say thanks to Lindahl. She has made a wonderful work for the organization. Uh, well, um, yes, I want to say thanks to Anadi for the invitation and to Gabriel for her hospitality. I want to introduce you in, in a topic little known, it's psychological trauma and how to deal with it using auricular chromotherapy. Before that, we, we have to define what trauma is. According with the DSM number five of the American Psychiatric Association. Trauma is defined as the exposure to actual or threatened uh, death, serious injury or sexual violence in one or more than three ways. The first one is directly experiencing the event. Number two, witnessing in person the event occurring to others. Number three, learning that such an event happened to a close family member or friend. What are the consequences of trauma? Immediately after the event, the shock and denial are typical. Long-term reactions include unpredictable emotion, flashback, strained uh, relationships, multiple physical symptoms like headache, nausea, etc., other symptoms. And uh, Teacher and Van der Kolb, two experts, believe that uh, most of these psychiatric pathologies are caused by trauma. And the most domestic violence is directly related to childhood abuse and neglect. And where is the trauma stored in the brain? In the limbic system, which has three structures. The hippocampus, which consolidates long-term memory. The amygdala, which processes emotional memory, and the hypothalamus, which governs these functions, <coughs> motivated behavior like eating, drinking, sex, body homeostasis like balance, body temperature, blood pressure, blood sugar. Well, these structures are not separated they are interlinked in the subcortex of the brain, uh, call it also emotional brain. Well, you can see in this picture something interesting. Here we have the hippocampus. You can see the volume of the hippocampus in a normal person. And you can see the hippocampus the hippocampus in a patient with post-traumatic stress disorder. There is an anatomical reduction. The conclusion is there is an anatomical injury when the people has a trauma. Well, this is a work about uh, 
functional magnetic resonance study of the near crash passenger uh, from this fly from Portugal to Canada. It's a famous fly because the airplane loads the gasoline and glide it during 25 minutes until a violent, a violent forced landing. 15 years later, these psychologists who traveled in this flight uh, interviewed uh, 10 passengers of this flight who were uh, asking uh, them about details of the flight 15 years after. And in the image appears the activation of uh, amygdala and hippocampus. It's when you remember a trauma, there is an activation of amygdala, there is an activation of hippocampus. In practical terms, before treating any pathology, pain, psychosomatic uh, illness, you have, we have to look for, it's not easy, because some uh, trauma are blocked and to treat. Well, conventional types of, tra of treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder, maybe you know, there, there is cognitive behavioral therapy, family therapy, medication, um, EMDR, this technique is use it and is very effective. I have been using in the last 20 years. But we have another techniques, non-conventional, we can say, like uh, auricular therapy. I practice this more than uh, 25 years. And auricular therapy was discovery and developed by this man, Dr. Paul Nogier. He presented in the Société d'Acupuncture in France in year 56, your first discovered. Well, he demonstrated that all the organs of the body are represented in our ear. But uh, how did he find it? How did he find the points? If I clamp my thumb with a, with a clip, a few seconds later, I have in my ear a painful point. And also, there is a fall of the electrical resistance of the skin in this zone. Then we have to find the point by pain and by electrical detection. This is a work of Dr. David Alimi, is a neurosurgeon of Paris. Faculty of Medicine. And <clears throat> look at this. What happened if I make a tactile stimulation of my right thumb? If I make only this, I have an activation in the cortex of the brain in this region. And if I put a needle in this point, I have an activation in the same region. This experience was, is a, we, it, this is the point of the right thumb, okay? And when I put the needle in this point, I have the same activation here and here. This experience was repeated in 10 patients and 
finding the same activation, this zone, this zone, this region. It is the demonstration, the same demonstration of the observation of Dr. Paul Nogier. Dr. Romoli from, is a professor in Florence, Italy. He made this extraordinary, extraordinary, extraordinary uh, work. Uh, demonstrating the specificity of each point. This is the right thumb, okay? And this is a point called a uh, brain stain auricular acupoint. If we take two different points and we make an stimulation separated in the same patient, we will have this. If we make a put an, if we put a needle here in the right hand point, we have an activation in this region of the brain. <clears throat> and if we make an stimulation in brainstem auricular point, we have another region of the brain with activation and disactivation in other region of the brain. This is a significant uh, demonstration of a specificity of each point of the ear. We can detect the point by pain with this pressure detector. And we can detect the point with Electrical detection. There, there are a lot of devices for this. Well, how can we treat the points? We can make massage. We can put needles, semi-permanent needles. We can make laser. We can make electric current. And we can make chromopuncture or color puncture. Okay, but uh, if you are agree with me, it's uh, demonstrated that all the organs of the body are in the ear. We have to find where is the limbic zone in the ear. <clears throat> Dr. Paul Noger wrote about this 40 years ago uh, writing that there is in the border a scare, a scare, psychological, psychological scare. <clears throat> Make me a favor. Can you clamp strongly your own ear lob, please? Strongly with your inner fingers and thumb. You have to make strong pressure. Maybe you can observe that one side is more painful than the other side. It's OK? Yeah. Well, this indicates uh, that there is a suffering of the central nervous system. And if this zone is painful, this zone is called antitragus. This is the tragus. Do you remember when I put the green color? And this is the antitragus. It corresponds to the limbic zone. OK? Well, how to find the limbic zone? You remember the work of the near crash accident in the fly? There is an activation of the limbic zone when you uh, of the limbic system in the brain when you ask to the people remember the event the traumatic event and <clears throat> to find the the zone of the point or the point in the in the ear in the lobe of the ear we have to to ask to the patient to remember the worst moment of the 
even. The people have three-fourths picture of what happened. And then we have debated the limbic region of the brain, and we will find a tender zone in the earlobe. Dr. Noyer said that when the event, traumatic event, <coughs> is uh, recent, six months, eight months, we can find this even in the right earlobe. But if this is an old trauma, we can find it in the uh, left uh, ear. Okay. Before to, to show the protocol, <clears throat> then, because I use it during 20 years EMDR, when you treat some, someone with post-traumatic stress disorder, I, I work a lot with people who lost their son. It's the worst of the trauma. And these people suffer uh, of pain in both earlobes. And I observed when I treated with EMDR and, uh, and the trauma has gone, the pain in the earlobe disappeared. Then I asked myself, what happened if I treat the limbic zone at the same time or why the patient remember the trauma. Then I asked it to the patient or my patient to remember the trauma and I projected a yellow light on the limbic zone and three, four minutes after the image disappears. I repeated the experience. I, I work with psychiatric or therapist, psychologists in Argentina, who there are a lot of psychologic, uh, psychologists who work with trauma. And then uh, they repeated the experience and it seemed it worked. Then with Dr. Saragoy Cochea, we made a protocol based on EMDR protocol. I have uh, some copies uh, to you, uh, but after you can ask to the uh, lean or, well. If we have time, I can make a demonstration with someone volunteer. Yes. Well, first, we have to, pulp, to palpate the both ears to find the, the most painful points. Then we know if it's something recently or it's an old trauma. Maybe. Uh, the patient can feel pain in both lobes. Then we ask to the, to the patient to close the eyes and try to remember the most terrible image of trauma, at least for one minute, only one minute. After that, we ask to the patient to tell us which is the emotional, the emotion accompanies this image. Maybe sadness, fear, anxiety. And we have to, to, uh, to uh, describe and the intensity of this emotional perturbation. And we have to make a scale to, to know the intensity. This scale is called subjective unit stress. Then the patient will tell also which negative words, we call that 
negative cognition or thoughts accompany this image. For example, I will never overcome his death. It's a negative cognition. Next step, the patient is asked, is asked which body sensation li links with the emotion, oppression in the chest, etc. Always, in all the patient, all the patient with trauma, there is an image, there is an emotion, and there is a body sensation. Always. Always. The positive points will be detected using a pressure, maybe with the fingers, you can find it. Electronic detection we can do. Clamping with fine fingers like I show you on the antitragus. And the points will be treated with yellow color, with the color puncture, and the patient is asked to maintain, to maintain the traumatic image in mind. We can to observe the face, the breathing of the patient, the expression of the face. Three minutes at least. We have to wait three minutes. And then we ask to the patient to describe the image. Generally, the image will disappear in three minutes. OK. We measure once again with the help of the suit scale. If we begin with uh, 10, nine points, we have to, to arrive to zero to two. <coughs> then the patient is asked about the cognition, the negative cognition, and you will see the cognition is changed. Okay, um, you can ask to the patient if, you, if he has uh, some corporal or body sensation. Well, um, I work with the two doctors of Brazil, Dr. Yossi Sumi and Dr. Fabiana, Fabiola Luz. Uh, she is uh, psychiatric and we we published our first work in this journal of acupuncture in Germany. And in the same magazine, in the same journal, Dr. Helms from, I think it is San Francisco, uh, he, he wrote something, uh, uh, another protocol for the same uh, topic. Incredible. Well. Uh, I have a film I want to show in five minutes. Uh, how to see? Okay. I think uh, I need dark in here. The light here on. Okay, it's okay. She she lost her father. Eight uh, seven. seven. Uh, I have not son. Uh, sorry, sorry. I don't know where is the son.
Yes, I think yes. Ah, yes. Yes, it's okay. You have to observe the face. He is processing the trauma. She is processing the trauma.
I think the film is slow, the, I don't know what, the projection, no, yes. Yes. Look at the faces, she's changed. And he said, Ha pasado ocho días, cerrar los ojos, respiro por favor, y tratar de buscar esa imagen. No podía sacarte de la cabeza. Well, we can, we can treat children with this technique. And uh, to work with children, it's not easy because they don't want to talk about their feelings, about their traumas. But they love to draw. Then, I don't see a lot of children, but when I have, uh, some children, I ask them to, to draw the problem, to draw the trauma. Look at this, this case. It's a 10 years old girl with phobia. She couldn't uh, sleep alone with the light uh, off. And they open always, uh, the door op always opened. Then I asked her to, to draw uh, the problem. 
and she make she made this and you look very interesting this uh, Where is the t ah, okay. Oh it's okay, it's okay. Thank you. You look this drawing, you look the eyes open and the mouth in this direction. The hair here. Then this girl was a fall from the second floor with the bone fracture of the crown, and she was in coma one week, four years before. And uh, I asked her to draw the problem, and I asked her to remember the moment one second before the fall. And I treat with uh, chromotherapy in the airlock that was painful, the draw and the image before the fall. Five minutes after I, I asked her to draw how, did, uh, how felt she and she make this five minutes after she made this drawing. Look at the eyes, close it, look the mouth, and uh, she began to sleep uh, the same day. Well, another case uh, look at this, the comparison in between the two draw. Five minutes after, before and after. And this is a, a boy of uh, nine years old who his father, that uh, he was a teacher tennis and he played tennis with uh, his father his diet in the, in the court of tennis. And then the boy didn't uh, play again tennis. And when I meet him, I ask him to draw the feeling, uh, his feelings. And in this draw, I put on the table all the pen with colors. Look at this, only black. His, his name is Franco, he's crying here in the stair, looking at her mother crying in the living room. I asked him to, to concentrate in this drawing I put the, the chromopuncture with yellow three minutes and I asked him to make another draw. I had to stop him. I say stop, stop because he make uh, orange, uh, yellow, uh, musical notes uh, and five minutes uh, after he made her mother Look at this, and he and he play uh, tennis again the next day. Because the children are oriented to the future always, they want to survive with with the mother. They are oriented to the future. Well, if you want, if uh, we have a volunteer. I can make a demonstration. And uh, the patient, if we have a volunteer, uh, doesn't need 
to tell us the trauma because sometimes it's something not good uh, like sexual violence and, and I can work without talk with the patient uh, or tell about the trauma. There is a volunteer? Okay, we have one. <laughs> I know all the people are traumatized. Well, we become with... Uh, we, uh, uh, You can uh, let the glass, uh, you please. <clears throat> Only I ask uh, silence and respect. Yes. Uh, we can show the protocol for you, it's easy. Okay. I clamp the airlock here and here. Here. And on both sides. And both sides? Mm -hmm. Okay, the both sides. <clears throat> Can you tell us the trauma or no? No, no, I am. There are two weeks coming up. There are two weeks coming up. Two weeks ago? No, no, there are two traumas which come You have trauma. No, you have to choose okay. the worst. Um, Sometimes when you, no, okay. you treat the worst, the second okay. disappears. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. Can you tell us? Yeah. Oh, a microphone, because uh, a microphone to her. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. Two years ago, I had an accident with my leg. I got implanted, uh, and after six weeks, when the chest was away, uh, I had uh, um, a, a skin. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, well, and, uh, in, uh, with the months, it took over the whole body, including the breast, um, and I was trying other things, and I got allergic to many things. Told me the doctor, uh, and it's now since two years now it's a little bit better. Yes. Uh, I, and um, when I heard that I have to make the operation because it was an operation. I was really, really shocked. Really shocked. Because I, I'm very afraid of the, um, of the, um, I don't know, the little, the little of the narcos, yes. I got the, uh, I don't know, a yes, narcos here. Yeah. Yeah. Anesthesia. Anesthesia, okay. Uh, and now, uh, since that time, I had the pain. Now you have pain? Not now. Okay. When I walk for okay. here after five minutes, I have a pain here. Okay. And I, I cannot feel, I, I, I feel that the nerve is broken. Okay. Yeah? And also the, oh. the, the heel is not Okay, um, okay. <laughs> then, you close your eyes and try to remember the most terrible image. Which is the most moment, like a picture, the worst? Do you have? Mm -hmm. What is it? When the doctor, when the doctor said I have to be operated and I was alone in well, the hospital. Okay. Close your eyes and remember that moment. Okay? Number three. What do you feel when you remember these words of the doctor? That is a body sensation. Ah, okay. You're feeling, what the? I'm feeling very alone. And sad, anguish. Very sad and very... Very sad, okay. But also very uh, afraid. Very afraid. afraid. There are two emotions. Fear and uh, sadness. Yeah. 
uh, from zero to 10, how much? 10. And where do you feel these emotions feel in your body? Yeah, I feel hot and... Uh, in the hot. chest, in the chest. Yeah, I feel hot. And in the arms. And, and uh, in my heart. In your heart, okay. Uh, now a little bit, I feel pain on the Okay. Okay. It's... Uh, okay. Well. <clears throat> when you remember this trauma, what are the words that come with the feelings? Um, I never... I will never will Okay, this is a negative cognition. Well, wait, wait, wait. Here you have? No, on both sides. Both sides, okay. You have to concentrate on this moment that you said, okay? Yeah. It hurts here? Yeah? yeah. Okay. Only you have to concentrate in the image.
well. What happened with the image? With the microphone, please. And the sadness? No, no sadness. And what do you think about, about this trauma? Before you say the negative convention, I never walk or something like this? No, no, I have never wake up. And now? Uh, I see a bright light. And what do you think about the future? I go to the light. OK. Do you feel good? Yes. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, uh, we have time. And now. Okay. Y los tratamos por medio de lo, de la oreja también, con acupuntura, uh -huh. pero toman muchos tratamientos. No, no. Uh, in my experience, I think I have, I don't know, more than 2,000 cases. I have uh, worked a lot with people uh, who lost sons. I worked with uh, a lot of women who was raped. And uh, only few sessions. Sometimes one, two, three, not more. And um, I treat a lot of people, you know, uh, you remember I say when I was in the panel that people with chronic pain, I see a lot of people with chronic pain, uh, the most of them ha had uh, suffered trauma in their childhood. And then first I treated uh, the trauma in the childhood. But in the childhood, uh, supposing a, a woman was abused, during a lot of years, from the five years to 12 years, and then you have treat two or three traumas uh, of his history, of her history, and it's enough. And sometimes the pain is gone. Always first, I, it's not easy to look at, uh, to find the trauma. Uh, because in the childhood, sometimes the, the, the child block the, the trauma. He didn't remember, they can't remember. Then you have to use the body sensation to arrive to the trauma, I, including the trauma before three years ago. Uh, ago, before three years. The, the, there are not images before three years. What? And how long will it last? Forever? Or will it come back? No, the image, in, I think, in the 80% the, the times, it's over. They can remember. They can remember. It's not forget, it's they can remember without emotion and without uh, negative conditions. You have seen uh, she, she, she changed the, the condition. Yes. What about the persons who have no emotion to their trauma? Uh, what? Las personas que no tienen emoción con el trauma, 
Well, sometimes the diagnostic is uh, it's a dissociation. There are dissociated, but you have to associate to the trauma to the people to treat. It. Sometimes you arrive. Yes, supposing um, a woman with a violent man, uh, supposing the man is violent with her, uh, maybe during years, years with violence, and sometimes the same woman had suffered in their childhood, violence by their parents. And sometimes when you treat the violence in the childhood, the trauma in the, the marriage is disappeared. You have to, to, to find the worst trauma or the first. Another question, yes. No, no, no. You have to uh, make remember, and I, in the first session, I treat the worst of the patient. If not, it's not a cure. You have to treat the worst trauma in the first session. You have to to get the, the skill to arrive to the trauma with the empathy, I suppose. But in the first session, you have to treat the first, the worst. Uh, one. I can see there's many questions. I, I suggest you meet Daniel and talk with him after this because we need to take a break. So. Okay. So we meet again at 11. Okay. Daniel, thank you. Thank you.